Ah, another chill call in the VC. I can't see anything going wrong this fine, fine day of ours, gentlemen. It's truly a spectacular feeling indeed. Truly a fine day, Sir Knuckles. Ah, yes. Indubitably, a very nice day. There won't be very many splendid days quite like this one. So, is this supposed to be like a bit? Or do you two have a motive for acting all posh all of a sudden? Nah, I just like saying posh words. Like indubitably. That's such a freaking good word. Indubitably. It's very indubitable that indubitably is a fun word to say indeed. Anyways, what are we gonna do for today, big bro? Hey, I was thinking a tier list. But maybe one with not too many entries? I don't feel like sitting here for a full 30 minutes talking about whatever, considering we've been on a roll with moderating the server. True. We're getting invites from most of the gang now. Well... Considering that this fine, glorious day couldn't get worse, I'm up for anything right now. Actually, I think I got a good idea. Why don't we try ranking the Sega consoles? There aren't too many of them, and it'll make for an interesting topic of discussion since not a lot of Sonic fans were around to play them. Hey, that's a good idea for once. Screw you. I'm definitely down for trashing on Sega a little bit more than per usual. Dude, Nux quit it with the Sega hate. Like, what the heck would even happen to us if they found out we were shit-talking them like this? Brother, nothing would happen! What are they gonna do? Get rid of us? We're the flagship franchise of Sega! They aren't gonna do shit! It just feels kinda wrong talking crap behind the backs of the dudes who literally conceived us, but whatever. Guys, guys, let's settle down. It's a good day, remember? Indubitably and all that. Yeah, you got a point. Nothing's gonna go wrong anyways. We'll be A-OK. -okay. You know, now that you said that, something's definitely gonna go wrong. Was that a fucking Smash Bros intro? Oh, god damn it. You just had to say something about nothing going wrong, didn't you, Nux? Now we got this freaking tin can in our VC. Hey, I was just saying how it is, bro. You gotta be positive with this indubitably. All right, enough with the indubitably bit. Okay, Metal, what do you want? Uh... What did he say? We don't speak in beep boop language, dummy. Speak English. Uh, I think he's typing something out in chat. Wait, how the hell did Metal even get in here in the first place? Probably had something to do with Eggman again. I mean, if he could hack his way in, then I don't see why he couldn't get Metal in here too. Bro, seriously? I am the real Sonic. We've gone over this like 50 different times, you tin can. I'm not gonna bother, bro. He can't do anything anyways, so I don't really care if he stays or not. Okay, okay, I got this. Metal, do you know what Sega is? Okay, and you know, they made consoles, right? Okay, do you think you can just sit there, be chill, and help us with a tier list? The suspense is killing- Shush, Nux! All right, that works for me. Looks like Mr. CD is gonna be joining us, fellas. Yeah, I don't really care if it's just for a video. No bad blood here, right? I just wanna do a damn tier list, man. I'm bored. All right, all right, give me a second. I'll go ahead and find a good one real quick. Actually, while we're waiting, I think we should bring something up regarding the channel. Ain't that right, Nux? Wait, what? Oh, oh yeah, I almost forgot. We got channel memberships, folks. Give us your money now. No, I, Nux, that's not how you, Ugh, okay. Knuckles is right about that, everyone. We recently activated channel memberships. If you didn't know, that allows you guys to gain special content for this channel, for a small price. Members can choose what games we play and what tier lists we do every once in a while. You can even choose which guests from our squad get to join. It all depends on the most liked suggestions. Although keep in mind that not every video will be member voted. We still have plenty of our own ideas. You'll also get these sick-ass badges that get displayed next to your username to show you're a part of the squad. We'll be hearting and replying to your comments, too. If you have any questions, then they will for sure be answered. You'll get to watch our videos a little earlier than everyone else. So that's an immediate bragging rights point right there. And last but not least, every member's username will be proudly presented at the end of every video. Ain't that something? You guys are kind of sort of sharing the video with me. And to keep the ad stuff short, we'll wrap it up there. But just keep in mind that you, by all means, do not need to get a membership. It's just something to help support us and get some extra perks while doing it. Thanks, y'all. All right, you got that tier list, Sonic? Sure do. Get ready, everyone, because first up is the SG-1000, Sega's first console that was unfortunately Japan exclusive. It only lasted for about two years as well. Wait, really? Wow, I always thought the Master System was Sega's first. 
I had no idea this existed, to be honest. Yeah, the SG is a pretty obscure piece of hardware, but it honestly isn't too bad for Sega's first. It ain't anything special either nowadays, though. Can you guys name a few games that were particular highlights on the system? Maybe so newcomers can play them through totally real and legal methods. Wink wink. Sure thing, buddy. There ain't any Sonic games on this since we didn't even exist back then yet. But one of my favorites is Flicky. It's technically the first Sonic game if you really think about it. You just run around and collect baby birds while avoiding cats and stuff. It's pretty fun. I'm a big fan of good old Space Invaders and Galaga, both of which were on the SG. I'm not going to explain them because if you haven't played either of these games yet in your life, there's something wrong with you. Hero ain't bad, but you still aren't me, you dumb metalhead. Honestly, I can't really say much else for the SG. The fact that it was Japan exclusive definitely didn't help, and it's way overshadowed by the later consoles that Sega released. Maybe we should give it C tier then? It should at least stay out of D, out of respect for it being the first. Sounds about right, C tier it is. Now we're on to the actual first console to be distributed to a larger audience, the Sega Master System. Here we are. The Master System was released right around when Nintendo released the NES. It was Sega's first true attempt at breaking into the home console scene. Yeah, and it had a pretty decent lifespan too. I like that it got revision models and even some accessories like a light gun. And the lineup of games was much better and included a lot of Sega staples like Fantasy Star, Prince of Persia, the Disney Illusion games, and of course, the 8-bit Sonic games. Said Sonic games were much better on Master System compared to Game Gear thanks to the screen size, by the way. They didn't port over Triple Trouble for some reason, though. Yeah, but at least Sonic Chaos is pretty alright. I think that the Master System overall was much better than the IG-1000. What's your thoughts on this, Metal? That egghead really needs to give him his voice back, dear lord. Facts. Facts. Yeah, I agree with that. It's a respectable console, but later entries did it better. B tier for the Master System. Sounds good to me. But now we're on to the most prominent and well-known Sega console of them all. That, of course, being the Sega Genesis. Oh, hell yeah! One of the first 16-bit consoles to really hit it off. Not to mention how damn good that controller felt in your hands. It's also when Sega truly entered the console wars and came out on top for a bit until Nintendo released the Super Nintendo. The 16-bit on the Genesis was crisp, facts. and the sound effects that came out of each prominent title were golden. Also facts. The game lineup was crazy, too. I don't think it needs to be said that the classic Sonic games were absolutely fire, especially Three and Knuckles. So true, Blue Buddy. Also, the introduction of lock-on technology was sick. I remember my mind being fucking blown when I stuck those two cartridges together. And you can't forget about the other bangers that came out on Gens. Some of my personal favorites were the later Fantasy Star sequels and Rocket Knight Adventures. Oh, hell yeah. Absolute classics. Those are indeed fire, but I personally enjoyed some good old Streets of Rage. And how could I forget Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3? That port was freaking sweet back then. All of those favorites are valid as fuck. I'll just throw in Contra Hard Corps and Gunstar Hero for good measure. Point being, the gens did not only have the power to back up its games, but the standout games themselves were all gems. Uh, I guess you could say it was a gems collection. <laughs> Fuck you, dumb robot. That horrific pun aside. Yeah, the Genesis is an easy S tier without question. And while we're at it, I'll just throw the Sega Nomad in A tier too. It's basically a handheld that played Genesis games for those who didn't know. But now we're on a bit of a controversial one here. The Sega CD. I personally didn't think this had much to offer, honestly. Seriously, like it's barely even a console. It's more of an extension to the regular Genesis. <laughs> S-tier? You're seriously tweaking now, Tin Can. Maybe Egghead needs to rewire your doodads or whatever. I like Sonic CD just as much as the next guy, but like... That's one of the only good games that I can name off the top of my head. The rest was just FMV garbage. I actually think Heart of the Alien and Snatcher are pretty hidden gems for the CD. But other than that, yeah, the lineup of games it had was kind of mediocre. Couldn't have said it better myself. It was a mid add-on for an already near-perfect console back then. But I'd still give it a B tier. Partly not to piss off metal too badly, but also because some of the consoles we're getting to next are way worse. Sounds about fair. B tier for the CD. Sorry, Metal. That's just how it goes. Wait, what the fuck? Oh, huh. He's gone. Strange. 
Anyways, what do we think about the Sega Pico? You gross baby console! Yeah, this thing was meant to be a shitty kid's console and nothing more. Like, did it have any decent games? Uh, nope, I, I don't think so. Actually, it had one extremely fantastic game. Oh, God. One that I just love coming to over and over. Don't you say it, Sonic! It's Tails and the Music Maker, baby. <laughs> the Pico's going in D tier, and that's final. Move on right now! I don't know what's happening, but you might not want to get so passionate over a shitty kid's toy, Tails. Uh, it doesn't matter, but you're right. I'm calm now, thanks. Uh, all right then. So now with that out of the way... We're gonna move over to the Sega 32 X. Easiest steer of my life, bro. Such a god ear system, the birth of the great Knuckles Chaotix, an absolute masterpiece of a game. Without this, we wouldn't have the best game to be ever made. Exit Ghost Guns Live Night Show you Whoa! I'll keep a good for ya! I. I. I don't. I really just don't know what to say at this point. Well, I do. And that's that the 32X is even worse than the CD, and Knuckles Chaotix does not save it whatsoever. That's Cap and you know it. Besides, the 32X has plenty of other fantastic games to hold it up strong. Oh, yeah? Like what exactly? Well, there's Virtua Fighter, there's. Yeah, I'm taking that silence as there not being that many games to make the 32X even worth it. Still, though, this has to go above that trash-ass baby toy, right? Yeah, I'll give you that. The 32X can go in C tier, then. All right. Sega's penultimate console is the Sega Saturn. And I actually kind of have a soft spot for it, not gonna lie. It's not a terrible console by any means. It has tons of good games, especially all of Sega's arcade ports. But the PlayStation came out around this time and completely overshadowed the Saturn. Exactly! Like, we can't forget that this console gave our homie Knights their first ever game. Speaking of which, Knights into Dreams is mad underrated. Yeah, spit those facts, knucklehead. I also enjoyed myself a bit of Radiant Silver Gun and X-Men vs. Street Fighter. Damn, it sucks that this console flopped. It just kind of came down to circumstances at the end of the day. Still, though, I think the Saturn still holds up strong today, and it's easily one of Sega's better consoles. Yeah, I'd give that little gem a solid A tier, if that sounds good. I was thinking the same thing, A tier for the Saturn. Now on to the last original Sega console that came out all the way back in 1998. That, of course, being the Sega Dreamcast. Man, this thing had so many fire titles on it. Again, though, Sega was getting completely beat out by its competitors. I mean, the Nintendo 64 had just dropped. The GameCube, PS2, and even the Xbox were on the way. Not to mention that the Saturn's underperformance really didn't help things either. Yeah, Sega at this point wasn't really seen as mainstream anymore. Oh, the fall of the mighty. Mighty? Where? Oh my god. Knuckles' negative IQ aside, the Dreamcast totally stands tall alongside the Genesis. I mean, it has Sonic Adventure 1 and 2 for crying out loud. Can't forget about the other new IPs that were introduced, especially Jet Set Radio. That game is so freaking good even to today's standards. Soul Calibur, Resident Evil, and Shenmue were some of my personal favorites. Like, I just can't wrap my head around this. The Dreamcast was just as good as the other consoles. It just came down to poor performance in terms of sales. Fuck capitalism! Well, that and the fact that Sega didn't have many notable IPs. But I'm glad we can all agree the Dreamcast was and still is pretty damn good, you guys. For real. And I think that gives the Dreamcast a very respectable S tier. Not bad, gentlemen. That's another tier list for the books. Who knows? Maybe Sega will one day somehow spew out a console again, and it'll end up being a big success. We can only hope, Nux. We can only hope. Still, though, this was a lot of fun as per usual. Thanks, Sonic. No worries, guys. Thanks for helping out on this. Now, what game should we get to next? Actually, I was thinking about a little bit of... Why, hello there again, you miserable little pain in the asses! I'm back once more! Oh, uh, this guy? Jeez, Seriously? On, really? You lame you, as fuck! Little bitch. Yes, of course, get it out of your insignificant little feelings. Anyways, a little badnik just so happened to tell me that you all shat on the Sega CD, hmm? I wouldn't call putting something in B tier shitting on it, but whatever. What's it to you, Egghead? Well, I just so happen to very much enjoy the Sega CD. Dear God, this Not to yapper? mention I've been feeling particularly like tormenting my least favorite little rodents.
Do you all know what that means? That you'll leave our lives and never, ever, 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 ever return? That'd be cool. Wrong, you red shit stain! Come on out! My fabulous creations of many eras! Wait. So let me get this straight. Yes? You decided to infiltrate our Discord server. Yep. Made your three copies of me Discord accounts. That's right. And then made them join the VC. Exactly! You're using your brain for once, you idiotic little rodent! Well, what are you gonna do now? We're just in a VC, remember? I'm glad you asked. Since I have no way of physically tormenting any of you, I'm just going to go into lengthy detail as to why you are wrong about the CD. Oh, really? I'd love to hear that then. Go ahead, Egghead. Fantastic! Now, a quick history lesson. The Sega CD was not exactly a console itself, but more of an add-on that connected straight to the Sega Gen- Yeah, fuck that. I ain't here for a history lesson. Now, Metal, I'm gonna give you the benefit of the doubt and assume you and your little bucket heads over there did not, in fact, want to make a Discord account at all. Dude, Tails, remember they can't talk? And I don't want to sit around and wait for this Nokia-looking ass dude to type a whole essay in chat. You seem to forget that I gained the ability to speak, Faker. Not surprising, considering only a fake Sonic would forget something so simple. Oh yeah, I forgot this fucking fossil actually got a voice box. Can you translate your little cuz, Mecca? I will, but not because you asked me. The real Sonic does not take orders from fakes. <laughs> I see! Very interesting, my brothers! Very interesting indeed! Okay, so what did they say? They said that the annoying yellow fox and the stupid red echidna have bad opinions on nearly everything they speak of. What the hey, hell, fuck you, you bitch? Tin can. As for the fake Sonic, he's all that but also a faker who, and this is not my words by the way, gets no bitches and will never be real even if he tries, you fucking fraud! Geez, Silver, you gotta chill, bro. Never in my life did I think I'd get dissed by a piece of scrap in a Discord VC. Well, at least things can't get any worse. Wait, is it time to diss on that damn faker? Motherfucker!